Darkness, Those Who Kill is a Danish series from 2019. It is in the original Danish just Those Who Kill, or even The One Who Kills or He Who Kills, but it is sort of a remake or maybe a, just a continuation of the universe, I'm not really sure, of an older Danish series that I haven't seen, which is why I can't tell you, but I am only talking about the 2019 one here. It is entirely in Danish except for a short scene in which one character speaks Swedish, but if you're familiar with Nordic TV series then you may recognise Natalie Mudueno, the attractive multilingual actress from Follow the Money, but other than that I didn't recognise anyone and it is a reasonably low budget affair that I found on one of Australia's free-to-air channels. And I don't say that as an indication that this series is bad because that's the same place that I found Trapped, Follow the Money, The Twelfth Man, and for a while they even had the full nine-hour version of the Millennium Trilogy. But unfortunately, Darkness, Those Who Kill does not hold a candle to any of those. I love it, What this show reminds me of is what my music composition tutor asked me in first year music when I said that I wanted my major work for that year to be a piano concerto. He just said, why? Now, to dig into that fully might be a little bit deep for this video, but what he meant by that was, what are you going to say with tens of thousands of notes and a complex format that lots of people have used over hundreds of years that you couldn't just say with, say, a sentence or a short story. And I think it's a question that a lot of creators, directors, writers, etc., don't ask themselves before they set out to write something. They don't ask, what is it that I'm using this medium to convey? Why am I writing a Nordic noir or, a, you know, a, this kind of murder story? What is happening here that hasn't happened in fiction before. This is why Beethoven was, and still is, so famous. He wrote music outside of the realm of all other music. He was mu using music at the time to say things that could not be said in any other way. There is no better window into Beethoven's psyche than through his music. Now, I know that's a bit big, to expect from, you know, just a random Danish series, but with this series I couldn't see what it was they were trying to say. It was just like they were just throwing scenes together for the purpose of being on TV. And it's not even that I think that every series must set a new standard for series and must do something that no series has done before. It's nothing of the sort. But if they don't do that, they have to, at the very least, be very, very entertaining. But throughout the entirety of this series, my heart rate lifted slightly, maybe once or twice, and nothing more. The first big problem here is the characters. We've got a couple of cops, we've got a couple of victims, and we've got a couple of perpetrators. And none of them, with the exception of one, are at all interesting. One of the perpetrators, maybe, sort of. But the series really needed to go all in on that. It needed to focus on that per perpetrator and what was interesting about them. And even I would go so far as to say, a, make it a sort of Hannibal Lecter character. So make it a perpetrator that we could kind of almost get behind. That would be really interesting, especially from a Danish perspective where this kind of violence is even more condemned than in the rest of the world. It would be really interesting to have that kind of perpetrator and they sort of almost did that but they were very half-hearted about it and it didn't really follow through and we ended up just with a bunch of fluffy nothing characters. The victims are never really made personal to us and their wits are never really shown to us. You either need to make us feel for them very very strongly and that's quite hard to do or you need to make them smart enough that we watch them and think, yes, good decision, I like it. And then those decisions have to go wrong in some kind of way. Think Jodie Foster in Panic Room. She's an excellent example of a character who does smart things but still can't get out of the situation she's in. These victims, they do dumb things, which is pretty standard for victims, but it's like we're given no reason to like them and it just makes the whole thing kind of boring. 
And the same goes for the police. Even if you compare them with the police in, say, Follow the Money, which is a good but not great series, in the first episode of Follow the Money, we're given a reason to like Mads. We want to see him succeed, even though he's actually chasing down people whom we also like. In Darkness, Those Who Kill, the police, it's just like, eh. I was excited to see Natalie Modueno in this series because I really liked her in Follow the Money and I was particularly impressed by her French, which she gets two opportunities to show off in that series and obviously none here. But even her, yes, she's a little bit better than the rest of the cast because she's just a better actress, but the script is so flat that she doesn't really get a chance to do anything. Additionally, a lot of the things that her character does and the positions that she's put into don't really make any sense when you think about it. What would really lead me away from recommending this series, even to someone who was a big fan of Nordic Noir, was that some of the scenes are extremely brutal. And I mentioned before the Millennium Trilogy, so it's not as if I can't handle brutality in a series, but I need there to be a reason for it to be there. And compared to the blandness of this series, Darkness Those Who Kill, it's so jarring, like it's it comes out of nowhere because it's just like bland, 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 bland. And then there's this scene that'll go for two or three minutes that is like no implication at all. It's shown to you and it's brutal. We don't want to watch this kind of stuff unless it has an impact on the series. But because this series just doesn't really form any kind of bond or anything between any of the characters, you don't feel like you feel like you're just being made to watch this kind of torturous scene. And it really, to me, shows a lack of awareness. It's, by the way, it's not one scene, it's a couple of scenes, but a lack of awareness from the, the makers of the, the series about pacing and just just how jarring this kind of stuff is. I don't think they're using it well. I think they're using it as an excuse to make their series seem darker and more hard-hitting than it really is. It seems that they're relying on one or two moments of reveal to really surprise us and keep us engaged throughout the entirety of eight episodes of this series. But Obviously, in my opinion, it doesn't work. And additionally, one of those moments comes in perhaps the third or fourth episode, so fairly early. And it actually means that everything that's happened previously doesn't really make sense. So it really is just one of those twists for twists sake. In fact, quite a lot of this series doesn't really make a heap of sense. The few character traits and sort of motives that are set up don't really follow through, so they're not used very well. And really, overall to Nordic Noir, this series brings very little to the table. Even something like Grey Zone or Midnight Sun, neither of which I think are excellent, they bring more to the table than this, and they're much more consistent in their tone and feel, and they're more interesting to watch. I guess the nicest thing I could say about this series is that it did make me think about what Scandinavian Noir could give us if it were to put someone in a sort of anti-hero villain kind of role, something like Dexter or Hannibal Lecter, like I mentioned before, that, I think, could be really interesting from a Nordic noir series. And the closest I guess I've seen would actually be Midnight Sun or indeed Grey Zone. It was a bad idea. But it was one of these pictures that made us fall down to you. So in summary, guys, I would put this series as a wouldn't watch. Wouldn't watch is ranking 4 out of 10 on my ranking system. Obviously, it's not very high and it's wouldn't watch, so I'm not recommending it. But there are three lower than that. So I guess for this series, maybe if you're learning Danish and you will just watch anything that's in Danish. But even then, I mean, the killing seasons 1, 2 and 3 in total go for about... 16 million hours, so I would sooner watch those a couple of times before watching this series once. But I guess maybe you could give this a go as your first series without subtitles because it doesn't really matter if you miss anything because nothing really very interesting happens. So that's about my summary of this series. It's unfortunate because I wanted to like it, but it just it wasn't engaging enough. So guys, I know I haven't talked about the elephant in the room, which is the reason that we're all watching more series and watching more YouTube at the moment. I've seen my subscribers on this channel 
uh, go from 100 to 200 quite quickly despite the fact that I uploaded literally no content in that time. I am sorry about that. I was working and then there was this whole thing with trying to sort out my work in around the whole thing and then work just stopped completely. So yeah, everyone's hanging in there. I know we're pretty much all in the same position. Uh, if you want to support the channel, the best way you can do that at the moment is by subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, all that stuff. Also, if you are interested in learning languages, head over to my other channel, Days of French and Swedish, where I talk about that. And I also do some sort of comedy stuff, maybe, and uh, a bit of music stuff and whatever. But it's mainly about language learning. So head over there and you can like and subscribe over there if you want. Um, yeah, thanks for your support and I hope you're well and safe and healthy and virus free wherever you are and I hope you're doing okay if you're um, being in lockdown like Australia is at the moment. Uh, so yeah, we, we'll get through this together, I hope. I don't like those kind of inspirational things but I just want to leave it on a positive note. Uh, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey hey.